another spin on the southwest turn. That's A.J. Foyt in the Dean Van Line Special. On the 22nd lap, A.J. Foyt made his second pit stop. Broken fuel pump and drive shaft troubles took 13 minutes and 40 seconds. But owner Al Dean said, don't worry, boy. Things are going to get better. I want to go back. Let's go way back and figure out where this started. I'm going to start with you, A.J. Indianapolis Motor Speedway. When you first remember wanting to race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? I was probably 10 years old working in my father's shop, and everybody used to listen to it on the radio. And when did you know that you'd actually get a chance to run at the Speedway? Well, actually, to come here, I come here in 1955 with some friends, rode up in my car, and we sit over and turn two. And they didn't have the grandstands like they have now in turn two, but that was the first year. So any of you guys, first year like that? You came not getting to race yet before you actually ran. Your first time was coming here to, to run in 77, right. right? Yeah, I watched his fourth win because I didn't make the show. I didn't, I, I didn't get to run it, but I was, I, I was here trying and uh, got to watch his fourth win, but that was the first time here. And Al, when did you first start? Your family's been involved at this place forever. Well, I came along, you know, following Bobby and Jerry and, and uh, my brother Louie. You know, they say, well, what made you want to be a race car driver? They did it. I wanted to do it. Elio, your first time at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You remember showing up here? Yes, I do. It was 1996 uh, when the, there was the first year out when the split happens, you know, cart and RL. And I came to do a sort of a show for Brazilian TV that they asked me to just go to the Indianapolis and do a show. It wasn't in a race, it was just a practice. And I remember going to the museum and, and filming the trophy. And I remember doing the interview or talking about we're at here in the you know, Apple's Motor Speedway. One day my face is going to be here. I, I just said that, I, I wish I could find that. But when I was in England racing uh, uh, Formula 3, I was watching as well until I finally got back here and I was like, okay, hopefully one day I'll be able to race when Roger put me in the race in 2001. That's, uh, that's when it happens. So uh, we'll talk about the coaching side and the relationship that you guys have later, but I'm going to go back to AJ. So 1958, your first Indianapolis 500. Elio comes and his first Indianapolis 500, he's got a coach talking to him in his ears. 1958, Roadsters, you didn't have radios. People weren't talking to you. How did you learn to run at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway when you came in 1958. Was there somebody that helped you? I used to go out and sit on every corner and watch other drivers that was there before me and kind of watch what they did. You don't see people do that no more. I used to go down and turn one, two, three, and four. And even when it was practice days, you know, if I wasn't getting around good, I'd go watch, try to see where they was running. Nowadays, they go and look at the computer and it tells them, what they're doing. Could you talk to a driver if you needed to ask a question or did you still have to learn it on your own? Well the watching? one driver that helped me in the sprint car days was Pat O'Connor and then my first year when I made the race they had that big wreck down in turn three. They said about drafting and all that you know all the old guys I, I said to myself huh you didn't tell me about nothing like this happening <laughs> in the first lap. Cars flying all over and, and I went spinning through there too didn't hit nothing but I said Y'all left this out. <laughs> so, Al, did you have somebody help coach you along? Did your family help you? Or did, I know A.J. helped you get a good ride early on in your career. Yes, uh, A.J. was That was backer. probably a mistake I made helping him. <laughs> <laughs> now, no. Several years later, he finally said, I don't know why I helped you, because you, you're outrunning us now. <laughs> but not uh, really, you know. We've been friends. I've been friends with him for many years, so I was just glad to see him be a four-time winner. Yeah, he, <laughs> Ford, helped me a lot because that was his car. He had the money invested. <laughs> so, you know, if I ruined it, he'd be upset. <laughs> er. Upset her. Yes. <laughs> so, Rick, your first Indy 500, you, you don't get a chance to make the show, but you come back in 1978, your co-rookie of the year, who helped mentor you? You're obviously, you come in with an unbelievable team with Roger Penske, but was there a mentor on that team for you? Uh, Parnelli was actually the first professional driver I met because he was already out of the IndyCar and racing an off-road, which is where I was at at the time. 
so I got to know Parnelli through the through the off-road racing, and then and then Unzers, you know, at Pikes Peak when I ran there, mm -hmm. and you know they were always very helpful in any questions I had or whatever, even before I got to the Indy car. But then once I got into the Indy car, uh, and and signed on with Roger, with Bobby, which I you know got to know in Pikes Peak, he kind of helped me with my second ride with Teddy Yip. And he'd, he would kind of show me around some of the tracks. I hadn't met AJ yet. And he'd show me around some of the tracks and things to do and not to do. And Al would help a little bit. And when I signed on with Roger, then I had my teammates, you know, Mario and Sneva. And they both helped me out a lot. And um, I've, always, I've always helped guys along the way, too, because I appreciated the help I got at the time. So was it intimidating your first year at Indianapolis, <clears throat> knowing you made the race, knowing you're running against A.J. Foyt, who at that time is a four-time winner, oh, yeah. and Al Unser, who becomes a three-time winner in your first race. Was that intimidating for somebody whose background really wasn't open-wheel racing? I guess in the early races, before I started driving for Roger, it was probably more intimidating, you know, with all these guys. Mm -hmm. And um, although I was back in the pack and I didn't have to worry too much about it, but uh, then as time went on as I got with Roger, then, you know, the pressure starts building. and. And now there's no excuses. I've got the equipment right now. I've got to put the numbers on the board. And, and that's when the pressure really started. So speaking of pressure, you come to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for your first Indy 500 in 2001, also driving for Roger Penske. Mm. And you've got this guy in your ear. Did you feel that pressure? Did that weight? Did you have any idea what you were doing in 2000? Expectation. I got to win an oval. I, I, I got to make sure. I got to figure it out what I need to do to win in an oval race. And... Um, I went ask a lot of questions. Um, I asked, uh, I actually talked to AJ. I couldn't understand much. My English was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Still very bad, but anyway, now I understand a little more. <laughs> I uh, talked to Al, uh, Rick, of course, uh, Bobby, uh, John Rutherford was the guy that gave him the coaching or, or, or kind of like explain for the rookies. But I remember Ricky was the one that said, look, you just gotta be there in the, don't, don't, it kind of like give me a little bit of guidance. Don't try to race in the beginning of the race, meaning you're gonna have a long, mad laps to do it until 50 laps to go. Mm -hmm. You gotta be there, on the, hopefully in the top 10. And I was, I was 50 laps to go, I was leading the race. So I'm like, I don't know what he told me, but he worked it out. It's working very, very well. But, but I remember very vividly, I did my homework. Um, asking experience of what happened and but hey I, I, I took notes understood and uh, it definitely helped me to uh, to win the race.